okay continuing the learning about loss series so this in this game here we're looking at now that we know and understand the um, state of our mind when the opponent is actually attacking then the creative mind needs to be able to have a better defensible answer to what is actually going on on the board and needs to utilize the answer process and needs to utilize the mantra as well so it needs to maintain those types of things because the creative mind in its own right mind and mine i'm talking about can't speak for anybody else my creative mind says right okay i'm in here i'm going to negate anything that i've learned and i'm just going to go for free flowing movement okay which isn't the best way i want to free flow eventually but i want to free flow with the answer and free flow with the mantra i'm going to take you through this game <clears throat> so we opened up that's all pretty straightforward stuff nothing majorly wrong at this moment so feeling fairly comfortable there now pushing through onto the bishop in my longer games i really would probably stay away from this move because pushing it onto the bishop doesn't really bode well for me um, as you can see i'm in creative mode here i'm going ah oh, well sod it let me just see what happens again you know and um, because nine times out of ten they don't take with the bishop and then your position does, your position doesn't feel right it feels like the queen's coming here taking over the center a little bit more so pawn takes there and like we said the, the bishop doesn't usually take gauge bars in our favor you know so that's a plus but for me positionally it doesn't feel nice it could be nicer but in order to try and practice things the creative mind goes well no you need to practice different things yeah you know you need to practice this that and the other you need to break the rules and stuff um, um and my logical brain is going well you know there's ways and means of doing it you know what i mean dude so we bring the queen up nothing drastic at this moment but we did lose a big advantage by bringing the queen up to defend the pawn yeah so we should have yep yeah. so we were thinking about protecting our pawn protecting the knight the creative mind like i said it, it creates its own adversity yeah there was nothing majorly happening here what we need to do is get the creative mind going oh let's get attacking like we in the last game we focused so much on the opponent just potentially putting some threat towards our area and the creative mind just does not select the right moves it does not select anything from the answer or the mantra it's good in its own right the creative mind when it comes later on um, within the games that are, are advantaged then there's there's quite a few of them as well and the creative mind can kick in when the whole body and the whole mind the logical mind and the creative mind are working together but when the creative mind is by itself um all hell breaks loose so they castle and bishop puts the annoying pin through to the queen and now the knight's been taken queen, showing that we're winning here but again i'm still not very comfortable with this position anyway so they come and attack but i think the danger comes in later so now we're absolutely winning apparently look at that we're like a few moves away from actually winning the game capture the knight because we want to double their pawns up in front of their king so that makes sense all pretty straightforward castling we want to attack this pawn here now this is where the creative mind probably kicks in because i can see straight off what i'm actually going to do <laughs> um, rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless it's to your benefit 
so yeah potentially coming here and then looking to swipe here but is there potential for the rook to get tra trapped then coming up and around all creative fancy stuff but it looks like really dynamic but is it going to be to our benefit our rooks aren't linked up yet maybe could have sat waited so they've gone for a, a king move so our creative mind is going whoa i'm taking this pawn this is showing knight move because it knows it's saying there's nothing wrong with the rook move but to me in our mantra rooks don't have any place in the center of the board and we grab the other pawn it's showing it's giving it thumbs up for that but again i'm not too comfortable with that i feel like the rook is going to get trapped the logical brain is saying that so he's bringing his knight across at this stage and i am definitely thinking he's going to trap me with his knight so let's a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong but that's not the creative mind thinking that it was just a knee-jerk reaction to say oh you're going to get my rook so <laughs> So I bring the rook down so creative mind not utilizing the mantra process rooks don't have any place in the center of the board coming back here should have been the number one option there was no benefits coming this side here as far as i can see logically speaking so now there's an attempt at locking in this rook so trying to give the rook some space also attacking the knight but then realizing the knight is actually protected so is this not just trapping my rook in knight comes down attacks our rook move the rook out of the way all looks nice look at the gauge bar it's actually singing our praises here now they come down attacking the rook bring the rook across so nothing else can really challenge it apart from maybe a knight or a bishop starts bringing the bishop out as we speak push on to the bishop just to try and lock it out of the way but it comes and attacks the rook so we bring the rook down nothing wrong with this look at the gauge bar it's like it's really kicking it's saying we are actually absolutely winning here brings their rook across and the creative mind like i say creates its own troubles it does moves that really there's no there's no rationale for it in a sense so their rook comes down i just want to see where this all goes wrong now this is where the creative mind is feeling under pressure it's like oh i don't know what to do and my rook shouldn't be here i need to get all arty so the rook comes across you know comes across it, the logic being that yes it can attack this um can attack this um, knight but this knight can just move here and take this pawn and it's also on our rook so this is the state where the creative mind is useless it's not very good at all in terms of dealing with um the threat the fear element is no good at working with that it needs to bring the logical mind in with it or it needs to develop its creativity to such an extent that it is almost logically creative so that is the difference between my creative mind at the moment so then we bring the rook back but obviously it's not going to keep the knight there so then they're up the exchange and at that point um i just resigned because it was too much um and it's quite surprising to see that we were out and out winning in that game but then the creative mind just takes over when you're in this natural blase type of flow 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 breaking the rules of your own mantra rooks have no place in the center of the board and then not finding appropriate maneuvers in your nice lovely winning position oops there in your lovely winning position not finding the the right move to take you know to take it forward so yes the creative mind can be the worst enemy and it helps you to learn about loss well helps me to learn about loss if i understand where my brain is at in these types of games 
and if I want to develop and improve these are the things I need to work on so the creative mind needs to be logically creative